Dear Lord Duo friends, I am very happy to meet you at this presentation. It is about technology, not so much about the music. Here I will share some of our ideas, which Anna and me experienced during playing the Baroque Lute. We shall share the hints of how to make it more accessible, easier and more enjoyable, so that more people play it. I will also talk about the development of this Baroque Lute, which I have here, which is made by Wojciech Wojniak, our great friend, and he was kind to implement all the wishes we had towards the instrument and making a very playable, very accessible uh, Baroque Lute, which uh, sometimes is possible to buy on our uh, website uh, ludeduo.com in the instruments section. Uh, before I start, I would like to thank very much all our friends, all our supporters, so for your likes, for your subscriptions, for your donations, for buying our CDs. And I'm very happy to thank all our online students for their passionate love to the loot and their work. So during the pandemics, uh, we found ourselves as also online teachers because many people asked us uh, for help and uh, we are very happy that more people are playing this beautiful instrument. classical guitar for very little money uh, in the shop and uh, to start practicing it. Therefore, uh, everybody does it and it's very popular. Unfortunately, it's difficult to make the lute as cheap, but uh, it's definitely possible to make the lute as playable. Uh, we are absolutely sure about this and uh, like you see the cheap guitar sometimes and it has nice action, it has correct strings, it has correct spacing, has nice neck, so one can easily take this instrument and start practicing and start uh, progressing. Unfortunately on the lute um, we don't know what the reason is but this is not the case. During the pandemics we happened to teach quite some people online and we still do and uh, we noticed that many many people do not have the instrument which is playable. Uh, therefore, our lessons always started with asking uh, the students to send us the pictures and the measurements of the instruments uh, they play and also their string lists, because uh, in many, many cases that was enough to correct, to make it like two times more playable and uh, to get better results already at uh, this point. Uh, using this occasion, I wanted to introduce this instrument which I have here. Um, over the years, together with our friend Wojciech Wojniak here in Poland, we were working on developing a, as we say, a very playable, uh, very playable lute. Uh, now it's already several years and Wojciech has produced uh, quite many lutes of this type and we find this very successful. Uh, it was a result of very long cooperation between us, uh, Anna, me. Uh, we tried to give the ideas and Wojciech as a perfect maker uh, implemented these ideas. So in this cooperation appeared this lute. We based it on the model of Leopold Wittalm uh, that original instrument comes from the 1760s, uh, was built in the Nuremberg area in Germany, and we find it the most beautiful uh, lute. It's like, you know, when you have violins, uh, people copy Guarneri or Amati, so we think this is a kind of Guarneri or Amati of uh, lute making. And what is very important is that this 
type of instrument comes after most of the tradition was uh, already was behind. Uh, so that means that we already had Weiss, uh, mostly had Hagen, uh, Falkenhagen, and uh, French music. So this is the this instrument is the top in its ideas. We think it's the top instrument of of the lute uh, in the 18th century. Uh, the original instrument is much bigger. It's for 73, uh, if I don't mistaken, uh, centimeters. Uh, that for we adapted the body, adapted the instrument, so now it is 69 by 95 centimeters. Why did we do that? Because, first of all, to make it more playable. Second, we never know how the long instruments were tuned, if they were really tuned A415 uh, or much, much lower, which is also possible. And uh, today we're thinking of the instrument which is tuned A415, and we have strings which are much more resonant if we want, so it perfectly works uh, in this scale. Also, so that, that's why it is convenient uh, for the left hand. It lets you play nicely French music and later music as Weiss and Bach. And also we thought that this instrument is developed for people who do not have enormous money to buy many lutes. Uh, therefore, the 69 uh, scale enables one to take off the Baroque string set and put strings to have it strong in G tuning. For instance, with single basses, uh, starting uh, these long basses can be single and the uh, short, short strings can be, of course, double and in an arch loop tuning in G-tuning for playing continuo, because uh, I personally always played on such an instrument, uh, being inspired by Konrad Junghenel, who played continuo like this, always on Baroque lute by Jakob van der Geest, uh, tuned in G. Uh, also, as a possibility, we make holes in the bridge, extra row of holes, 14 holes, uh, which allows one to turn this little uh, to turn this lute into a, a small theorbo in A, or a higher theorbo if uh, one prefers higher tunings. Uh, that works perfectly using uh, modern strings. Uh, then we add an extra uh, bridge. Uh, so this lute, I'm talking about this lute, in the first of all to, to show all the features uh, which we think are important uh, for the instrument. This kind of lute uh, one can sometimes order from the Lute Duo website, uh, from the instrument section, or since it's not very easy, uh, because uh, usually we have candidates for this kind of instrument, but one can definitely uh, subscribe for such a lute and in a while get it. certain features which uh, we find very important on any lute uh, to make it very playable. Well, it's our private opinion, so there are many, many ideas about how the lute should look like, 
uh, this here I express our opinion based on our experience. We use basic pyramid strings, which we find very good for our ideas and uh, which we find very much in tune. Uh, that's very important, having 48 strings to tune together to play duets, that's quite a challenge. Otherwise, and also we think that uh, there are very few original lute duets for two Baroque lutes, just for this reason, because it was very difficult to get two instruments in tune. If we look at how many Renaissance duets we have, uh, Baroque lute duets are almost nothing, there's very few of them. Uh, so therefore we use this kind of stringing, and I will tell you what we really do. Because I remember when I was a student on Baroque lute, I was writing to everybody to ask for their string list. Uh, so, I'm sharing what we have. So look, we use first three courses are rectified nylon, fourth course is carbon, it's PVF. Wound string on the fifth, then all the bases are wound, silver plated pyramid. The octaves are nylon on the six, nylon on the seven, and the rest are carbon, which is P, V, F, as you know the marking. So concerning the tension, we use, uh, as we think, we use regular tension. Um, someone maybe will call it very high tension, and there are people who will say this is low tension, but this is our tension. So the first course is zero, four, seven, five, nylon, and on the 68 scale it makes 3.7, 3.8 kilos. Then 0, 0.55 nylon, which makes 3.5 maybe kilos per that string. The third course is 0, 0.675 nylon, always rectified nylon, which is 3.2 kilos. Then we have fourth course, which is P, V, F, and uh, this is 0, 0.63, which is about 3 kilos per string. Uh, the fifth course is wound, uh, which is uh, uh, 3 kilos, and uh, then we go to the octaves. All the octaves are 2.7 kilos. Sometimes the sixth course is closer to 3 kilos, depends on the instrument. The bases are all wound, as I said, uh, and they are 3 kilos. 3 kilos, all of them. Uh, that's how we string the lute. Another important uh, thing which we find very, very critical and very much telling on the way we play is having the strings enough apart within a course. On the historical drawings, as we know, uh, most of cases represent about 4 millimeters between the strings in the course. Uh, we think that that instruments were built first of all, only for one type of strings, for gut strings. Uh, gut strings are fantastic, and they vibrate very, very narrow. So uh, the narrow vibration is not possible on synthetic strings. They vibrate somewhat wider. So therefore, we have 4.5 millimeters within uh, the core, so between the, between the strings. Um, the bridge we play I play somewhat wider bridge, which is 147, and Anna likes 145 millimeters, so 145 millimeters. Um, that's a very little difference, but uh, not narrower than this. And uh, the bridges we use are not based on one strict geometry of having equal distances between uh, the base, so called base, base courses. Our idea is that the, the fingers and the thumb are different entities. So, and this is true, the fingers never play lower than the sixth course. Uh, or sometimes, in very, very uh, rare cases, we play index finger on the sixth course. And therefore, we think that it's important to have it comfortable for the fingers. Uh, therefore, we have wider spacing between the courses of the fingers. 
usually between the side strings of the courses, if we take double courses, like for instance 3 and 4, usually it's 7.5, but we have 8.5. And then it gradually, gradually goes to the sixth course. Between 6 and 7 we have 8 millimeters, and then between side strings of the base courses we have 7.5 millimeters. So by this 8 millimeters between 6 and 7, we compensate so the thumb doesn't feel the change. And uh, so I will tell you so that you know uh, how the bridge is composed. So it's 11 between 1 and 2, 9 between 2 and the higher string of the third course. Then we have 4.5 within the third course, and then 8.5 between side between side strings, and then again 4.5 within the course, and then 8.5 between side strings of the uh, of the 4 and 5, and then again 4.5, then again 7, 8.5, and here 4.5 within the 6th course, and then 8 between the side strings of 6 and 7, and then after that, always 7.5 between side strings and 4.5 within a course. So this lets us play with expression without being afraid of the lute buzzing. And we find it extremely important because sometimes this fear tells dramatically on how the lute is played. It's very timid and we are always sitting like on a uh, playing on a minefield so that we will get this ugly buzz. Uh, uh, on the on the nut, we also have solution for that. Uh, all our unison courses are 2.8 or 2.7, not narrower and not, not wider, uh, within the course. And then on the sixth course, we have 3 millimeters. On the seven, we have 3.5. And we have almost 4 on the eighth course. Uh, then we come to these long strings. So here it's all very easy. We just have about 5 millimeters between the strings on the nut and one can make it as wide as possible. There is usually a space here. Uh, this is a swan neck lute, so uh, I would like to pay attention uh, that here uh, this little part of the bridge is made very flat, so not to clash with the long courses. So this lets us keep the strings even, so that like the the long string, the E, is absolutely almost parallel to the eighth course, so we don't have the situation where, where string, long strings go somewhat higher. Okay, uh, So this is very, very critical and very pleasant uh, to play because uh, you have very even, a very even feeling on, on, on the lute, and uh, that also helps. We find it also very, very important to have a nice scoop, which gives you space between the first string and and the top of the lute. We find it very critical because sometimes you see lutes where it is somewhat lowish so that you hit uh, with your ring finger, which we use a lot on the Baroque lute, uh, the ring finger hits the soundboard. Uh, so this is quite important. We have here about maybe seven millimeters in this area near the rows, something like that. Uh, we find it very important to have maple back and spruce top because that's very traditional for the lute. As we know, all the fancy lutes, they come from the countries where, the, uh, where there was a port, where there was a sea, and this all fancy materials could be imported, but uh, mostly the lutes were built with maple and uh, spruce on top and therefore on this lute we have nine ribs of maple. They are not very thick uh, because um, we think that the idea of having really hard body which reflects sound like a Steinway piano uh, that's not uh, about it because uh, this also results in very very long basses. So if the back is very heavy then the attack and decay of the bass are very distant, so that it sounds very, very long. Uh, so we think that the back tells on this dramatically, and using 
even pyramid strings on this lute, which are kind of long sounding. Uh, we find it very beautiful and they decay uh, nicely. Uh, so that's why we use uh, maple uh, on this lute. Usually on most of the lutes, if you have a sunny weather, you can look through the hole on, onto, the, onto the sun and you will see light through your lute. Uh, this is this is a correct uh, concept. Of course, there is golden mean, so that it shouldn't be too brittle and shouldn't be too light, lightly built. But uh, uh, that that's important. Having having said about the strings, I would like to talk about the neck and the and the fingerboard in in general. The fingerboard, like on electric guitar, is usually curved, as you. As you noticed on the Baroque lute, it very much reminds the electric guitar neck. So the curve is here, of course, near the first thread in this area. It goes all throughout the neck and it repeats here, maybe a little bit less, but it repeats here where the soundboard connects connects to the uh, connects to the uh, to the neck, because. Had it been flat here, we would have very high action on the on the higher frets. So therefore, it's very important to observe that this is done uh, like this. Uh, we also think that the frets should be as high as possible, and not uh, super high, but uh, with the first fret being at least one millimeter, or we use it sometimes 1.1 millimeters. So that makes it easier to uh, to press the strings uh, with uh, lesser effort. And uh, so we try to maintain the scale so that it goes, it gradually diminishes towards the higher frets. And on the high fret, we have 0 0.75 or 0 0.8 usually, well, something like this. So this we find very important because sometimes we see lutes which have 0 0.6 on uh, the top frets. Uh, that makes it very hard in, in high positions. Um, so this is the concept of the frets uh, we use. And I would also like to address a problem which uh, I recently noticed on the Facebook, uh, discussed on the Lute Society of America page, is about the first string breaking constantly on the lutes. Uh, the area between the first, where the first peg is, and the, and the peg box. That's the reason why the first string breaks. It has nothing to do with the material or tension. It has to do with this area. Often it happens so that the string goes from the, uh, from the curve to the nut and on the way it touches the peg box and bends over the peg box and goes onto the, onto the peg. Uh, it's hard when you have this situation on your lute because it's hard to change, but <clears throat> there are two ways to, to help this situation. Uh, first of all, if you have a skilled maker nearby, you can ask him to round this a edge because it's usually very sharp. So when it's rounded, it already makes it uh, much more difficult for the string to break. Also, you can glue something like very soft cloth Maybe something we usually glue under the chairs so that they don't damage the floor. This kind of material, also a little piece, would help it. And also, if you watch out that the string goes a little bit on the angle towards the peg, it's also sometimes possible to compensate. So on our lutes, we mostly we mostly try to uh, to to have it done in such a way that then the peg box is somewhat narrower than the neck itself on this side, so that this doesn't happen. I would like to tell you a little bit about the other type of lute which you maybe have. I will take a short lute, not short lute, but baroque lute with a bent head and pay attention there to certain uh, features.
So here, here I have a lute by Maurice Otegier, the Swiss maker, who made for us two identical lutes for our new uh, Bach project, which uh, is coming out soon, Lute Duo Bach Visions. And this instrument is also based on the same body you saw before. Uh, it's based on Leopold Wittheim body because we think it's really uh, the best possible body, at least for our taste. So, uh, on this lute I would like to pay attention to a couple of things uh, which let you do the same things I talked about on that lute by Wojciech Wojniak. So, uh, the nut sometimes can be wider than the neck. That would allow you to have nice wide uh, space for the bass strings so they are not cramped, so that you can have all the wide spacing on the basses. So oh, that they, you can go up to four millimeters on the low basses within a course if needed. Um, so the the nut goes a little bit out, so it's somewhat wider than the uh, the the neck uh, itself. Also, this requires that the bass rider is constructed in such a way that the, the strings can be really going one, one after the other, so somewhat to this side. Uh, the bass rider is a very, is a very, let's say, delicate point of the uh, traditional baroque lute because it tends to, to bend or it tends to break. So therefore, on this side of the bass rider here, uh, it's, you often see it, but you often do not see it, and this is really um, a danger sometimes. Sometimes it's somehow magically super glued, I don't know, and nothing happens, but also you see uh, these riders are broken, and uh, uh, that's a pity. So it has very, very thick uh, kind of pieces of... so it goes onto the, onto the peg box on this side, and it has huge support on this side. So uh, it's, a, it's a very, very good idea uh, when it is done, so the, the rider doesn't, uh, doesn't bend under tension of the strings, which is very, uh, very, very cool. Uh, so uh, this lute has all the features. Yeah, and here you have this nice, uh, this nice little uh, rider for the uh, top course, you see? On some lutes, with this kind of rider, the problem which I talked before about the string breaking at the at the peg box, uh, this doesn't exist on these lutes. Here it works very well uh, with uh, with this little little uh, rider. But uh, on the Wittheim lute, it's very important to observe so that the string doesn't touch the peg box. Well, I'm happy I could share with you all these uh, little ideas. Please write in the comments what interests you about uh, Baroque lute uh, playing, Baroque lute construction, anything. And uh, very, very big greetings from Anna. And uh, soon we, we hope to be presenting our new CD with our new concepts. And wish you all peace and health. Uh, that's been Anton from the Bye.